Thank you, Ian. That's a lovely um, introduction and welcome. So I feel very welcomed and uh, uh, very happy to be here. Um, it's great to be able to preach on this morning's uh, live stream. Uh, last week, I was sitting at home like you watching this and um, it was really exciting. It was really fun. It was a real blessing as well because I just felt it was so good to connect with the Restore family, albeit on a virtual level. Um, and I really enjoyed watching the kids who were commenting and saying how they were following Ian's hand actions. Um, it was nice to see hellos from familiar friends from around the world and of course the broadcast quality um, you know was absolutely phenomenal um, it was almost as if we had a BBC TV crew right here in Canfield and so, um, but then last week, I actually feel, when I look back at last week, I feel like it was quite a long time ago. And um, I don't know about you, but my weeks are feeling quite long at the moment. Um, and I think it's because we're all dealing with a lot of change um, on all sorts of levels in a very short amount of time. And so when I think about the sort of, um, on emotional level, um, we might all be kind of experiencing a whole range of emotions during this time. Um, feelings of uncertainty, maybe feelings of fear, anxiety, um, the adjustment of getting used to life without having people physically um, nearby us. Um, on a more practical level, working out what we're gonna do about our jobs. Um, some of us might um, still be commuting to work. Some of us are learning how to work from home. Others might even not have a job anymore because their workplace has closed. And then thinking about how we deal with our kids <laughs> with us at home 24 seven, when it's not quite a holiday for them as well. And then the other practical level thing to think about is grocery shopping. I know that their supermarket shelves have been fairly empty um, and just sort of thinking about how we're even gonna get access to the supplies that we need. I know that in our household, we are living from loo roll to loo roll at the moment. Um, and so there's a lot of changes on so many levels that we're all facing. And I've been sort of looking at um, social media a, li a little bit more in this period than I would usually do. And I think it's because there's a yearning within me to want to connect at the moment. And social media is a way for me to sort of hear what people are saying and to connect in with people, um, both my friends and my family and people around the world that I know. And anyway, I saw this um, thing on Facebook and you might have seen it as well because it went pretty viral, but I think it's quite helpful. It's a quote from um, the Lord of the Rings, uh, Fellowship of the Rings, sorry. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, and it says this, um, I wish it need not have happened in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf. And so do all who live to see such times. But this is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. And during times of crisis, I feel that we have a decision to make. What are we going to do with this time? And it's really easy during this time to kind of turn in on, in, on ourselves, to retreat from the world, to, um, to think about how we go into survival mode, how to protect ourselves, um, especially when we've been told to all stay at home. Um, and I think, but I think that, I really believe that God has placed us where we're all at for such a time as this. And even though we're meeting together this morning in a very virtual way, Actually, in reality, we are a church that is scattered. And a church that is scattered has the opportunity to have a really big impact for Jesus in the place where God has placed us. And so today I really want to think about how can we be an outward facing missional people even during a national lockdown? How can we carry the presence of Jesus into our communities when we've been told to stay at home? And so we're going to be looking at this uh, subject of being sent on purpose this morning. Uh, so I'm just trying to get this clicker to work. Um, it's nice to know that things um, don't work online as they don't offline, right, when we're doing it in real life. Um, so, yeah, we've been looking at sent on purpose, and I'm going to be looking at the passage of um, Matthew chapter 10. And this is the story of where Jesus sends out his disciples on mission. And just a little bit of background to this verse, um, the, uh, the disciples up to this, up to this chapter, up to chapter 10 in Matthew, they have been following Jesus around. They've been um, watching him do some amazing miracles, watching him do healings, watching him interact with people, watching him teach. Um, and so when we come to Matthew chapter 10, it's a really pivotal part of their journey with Jesus because at this point, they are um, being told by Jesus, you've been watching up till now, you've been observing and witnessing up till now. Now it's 
it's your turn. Now it's time for your mission. And so that's where uh, we start um, with the passage. Um, so chapter 10, verse 1. Um, Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother, Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Phaddeus. Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These 12, Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or en enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. So when we look at the first uh, verse of this passage, what we see, the first thing that Jesus does after calling the disciples to him is to give them his authority. Um, I think, uh, sorry, yeah, it's, it's there, sorry. Um, and Jesus doesn't leave us ill-equipped or powerless to do the work that he's called us to do. And what we see in the preceding two chapters of Matthew, Matthew's chapter eight and nine, is Jesus demonstrates his authority over and over again. He demonstrates his authority over sickness, over death, over nature, over the environment, and over the demonic. And it's this authority that he's giving to the disciples in this verse one. He gives the disciples, he delegates this authority to the disciples to enable them to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease. And it's this authority that Jesus gives to us as his followers, as his disciples. And this authority enables us to have authority um, over every illness and sickness and mental health condition and every disability and every bacteria and every virus and yes, even over coronavirus. And without his authority, we can't do the job that he has called us to do. And the job that he has called us to do, the mission, what is it all about? I believe it's summed up in Matthew chapter 10, verse seven to eight, where it says, um, as you go, proclaim this message, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Now, I don't know about you, but I know that for me, certainly, I do not have any power or any authority to drive out impure spirits or to heal uh, every sickness and illness on my own. But I know that Jesus does. And so Jesus delegates that authority to us so that we not only are able to speak about the good news of the kingdom, but it means we can also demonstrate the good news of the kingdom. And I was thinking about authority and how actually when you're growing up um, outside of your parents, the first people you encounter with authority are your teachers in school. And I was thinking about how a teacher in a school needs to have authority to do their job. Um, and so a teacher has authority to set homework. The teacher has authority to give out detentions, to basically tell the kids what to do. And actually now our teachers have authority to give out grades for GCSE and A-levels. Um, but a teacher without authority can't do their job. Um, I don't know if you, th um, if you think about um, a teacher without authority gets basically eaten alive by school kids. And my daughter has all these stories about the supply teachers in her school. <laughs> And she tells me this, and she told me this story about this new supply teacher who started in her class. And he came into the classroom and he said to the kids that he would circulate this blank seating plan. And he wanted them to fill their names in on this seating plan so that he would know who was sitting where. Um, and as this sheet of paper was circulating around the class, the kids started filling out fake names. And they thought this was absolutely hilarious. 
And I think that sometimes maybe supply teachers get a hard time from kids because kids somehow have a sixth sense to know that supply teachers maybe don't have the same level of authority as their regular teachers. And so just as authority is a must-have and essential for being a school teacher, I believe that being a, a follower of Jesus Christ, being someone who is being commissioned to do his work, um, authority is absolutely essential for us. Um, it's not a, a tack on or an optional extra. It's an, a completely necessary for us to, so that we can do the job that God has called us to do. Now, um, during this lockdown, um, I really believe that we can continue to walk in that authority, to act in that authority, um, because God has given us the gift of smartphones. Um, he's given us the gift of video chats, uh, Zoom. Um, he's given us the, chat, the, the, the gift of text messaging and phone calls. We can still connect with people, um, even though we are at a distance. And so we can still uh, act in authority, um, as we connect with people in these ways. We can still speak and command healing in the authority of Jesus over someone who is feeling unwell. We can still command peace over someone in the authority of Jesus um, over someone who may be feeling uh, turmoil and distress. And we can still, in the authority of Jesus, cast out fear to someone who might be feeling unsure about the, uh, the future, uncertain about what tomorrow will bring. And in this way, even though we are in lockdown, we can still see the kingdom of God break out in small little ways. Now, going back to my teacher example, um, a teacher, when they want to set homework, they don't have to ask permission from the head teacher. Or if they want to put a kid in detention, they don't have to ask the head teacher for permission to do that because they've already been given that authority. And similarly, I believe that we don't need to ask permission to speak healing over someone when we see someone who's unwell because the Father has already given us that authority. And we don't have to wait to have it because we already have it. He's given it to us already. And uh, at the beginning of this month, um, the, on the first Wednesday, which probably seems like a lifetime ago now, when we were all free, young, and, and, uh, and could go where we wanted to, um, beginning of the month, um, Ian and the team who went to Hong Kong shared about their experiences uh, at Jackie Pollinger's church. And uh, I remember I was, I was uh, at the meeting, and I remember it brought back so many amazing memories for me because I had spent my gap year serving in Jackie Pollinger's church. Um, I was a helper in one of the residential homes for the ladies who were coming off heroin. And um, so, uh, so people, so the ladies would come to this home where they would, um, where they, where they first come into the home, they would be uh, prayed over in tongues uh, 24 hours a day for 10 days to give them that protection as they were coming off and withdrawing from heroin. And I remember um, the first time I saw a woman being admitted into the home. And she, this lady came into the home and she was um, in, uh, had quite severe withdrawal symptoms. She was in a lot of agony and in a lot of pain, but we kept praying for her in tongues um, and taking shifts to do that, covering her in prayer. And I, but I remember thinking to myself, is this ever gonna work? Um, I remember er every time she groaned and, she, and every time she expressed how much pain she was in, I remember thinking, you know, is, this anything, is anything gonna happen? Can we actually help this woman? And then by about day four, she started having quite strong uh, physical uh, reactions. She was um, having physical convulsions. She was screaming in pain. And I remember feeling really scared seeing this. And uh, straight away, the leader of the house, a German lady called Ilona, who was really softly spoken, was really gentle in spirit, but she came over straight away. She looked the woman in the eye and she said, in the name of Jesus, and she cast out the demon in, in Cantonese. And then um, the rest of us continued praying in tongues over this lady. Um, and there were some words of prophecy around this lady's background um, where she had um, been involved in um, idol worship um, because in Chinese culture, there's a lot of spiritualism. There's a lot of belief in idols and superstition. Um, so they, they, a word of wisdom was given and then, this, and then her ties to um, her previous idol worship were broken in the name of Jesus. And then this woman, it was almost as if she kind of deflated she just um, calmed down instantly and she just curled up into a ball and she slept peacefully 
And I remember at the time seeing this um, and thinking to myself, wow, Ilona is so amazing. I really want to be like her when I grow up. She is so full of maturity and wisdom and authority. Um, one day I will be like that. But, one, but what I didn't realize at the time was that actually I had the same authority that she had. Um, in fact, we probably had, because Jesus gave it to both of us. Jesus gives it to all of us. And so uh, I didn't have to wait to grow up to have that authority because I already had it, even as a 19 year old. And, uh, but, I did, but because I didn't know I had it, therefore I didn't walk in it. Therefore I didn't act as if, I had, as if I'd known that I had that authority. And, um, and there are many times in my life where I've forgotten that I've had, I have authority, I have Jesus' authority that he's given to me. There have been times where I felt resigned or defeated by my circumstances, by the situation that I was in. Um, there are times where I would feel, I would, I would see tension and I would just accept it. I would see conflict and I would just accept it. I would see um, someone being unwell and I would just accept it. And I didn't, and I'm, but the thing is, all of us are powerful because Jesus has given all of us his authority to cast out all impure spirits and to heal every disease and every sickness so that we can do the work that he has assigned for us to do. And just one more quick thing on authority before I move on. Um, Jesus was perfectly submitted to his father. Um, in authority. And so because he was perfectly submitted to his father's authority, he was therefore able to act in full authority himself. And similarly, we also need to be submitted to our father, um, put ourselves under God's authority to enable ourselves to be able to walk in full authority. So moving on in the passage. So the first thing Jesus does is gives his uh, disciples authority and then, his, and then let's look at what his first instructions are to the disciples. So in verse five and six, his first instructions to the disciples is this. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. So his first instructions are really interesting because his first instructions are where not to go. Um, and it's not that Jesus didn't want people, the Samaritans or the Gentiles to know about him. We know that God's heart is for everyone to know Jesus. Um, but Jesus' uh, time on earth, his time in ministry was focused, um, first of all, on the people of Israel as a starting point. And then we see later on in, in the book of Acts how we see that the good news of Jesus then gets taken beyond the boundaries of Israel and out to the, all the known world at the time. So we know it's, this, this instruction isn't about where God's boundaries lie for his love for the world. Um, but, and, and in a sense, his first instruction to the disciples almost seems like a contradiction because he's kind of sending them out, but not sending them far away, but sending them to the place where they already were. And so this says to me that um, being a sent people um, isn't necessarily just about where you go, but it's about having a sent attitude wherever you are. And so this is the message I feel that we need to hear today, that actually we can have a sent attitude, even though we've been told to stay at home because of this lockdown. And um, the message version of uh, verse five and six um, is really interesting. Um, it, says, it says this, um, uh, go to the lost, confused people right here in the neighborhood. And for me, this feels like a word for us at this moment in time. Because right now in our neighborhoods, people are feeling lost and confused. And they are feeling um, scared and unsure. Um, and so they, people are feeling unsure about where their income is going to come from, whether they're unsure about whether they're going to be healthy um, or unwell. They're unsure about where they're going to get their groceries from. And uh, two weeks ago, um, I set up a Facebook group um, as a way to kind of coordinate practical help um, in the community because the, at the time the lockdown hadn't happened, but the government were already introducing um, some measures around social distancing and around asking people who were in vulnerable groups to stay at home. And so 
um, I wanted to coordinate help between people who are needing help because they're in uh, they're confined to their homes um, and people who are willing to give that help uh, and, the, and, and, and give that help in terms of helping with groceries, picking up prescriptions, um, giving a friendly phone call. And um, the response has been absolutely overwhelming. I've had so many messages and so many emails from people who've been saying to me, I really want to help. Tell me what I can do. I can pick up groceries for people. I can do stuff on the way to work. I can do stuff on the way home from work. Or I'm working from home. I just want to be able to give back to the community at this time. And um, after two weeks of having that Facebook group, we've now got over a 1,000 volunteers from across Loughton. Um, we now have a central coordinating committee of 24 people. We have eight ward-based WhatsApp groups, which have now been broken into street-based groups across the whole uh, town of Loughton. And, um, and so we are now setting up this model of having street-level coordination so that we can have neighbours who are helping neighbours. And the group is called a, a mutual aid group. Um, and I really love the idea of mutuality because for a long time, you know, church would do community work as in they would do to the community. Um, as in, and there's a presumption behind that, that we as a church have something and they have nothing and we want to give those people something. Um, but I really believe that we need to move away from this and actually understand the mutuality between people, whether we're Christians or not Christians, whether we're a church or whether we're a community, because we all have something to give and we all have something we need to receive. And so the idea behind mutuality is that one day I might be someone who can offer help, but on another day, I might be the one who needs help. And so, uh, and so even though this, this group that we've set up doesn't have the Restore branding all over it, actually, I really believe the heart is, the church is at the heart of this group because we have so many people from Restore Church who's in this uh, mutual aid group in Loughton and who are offering to do so many things and to give out so many things. And there we also have a lot of um, Restore people who are in the Central Coordinating Committee um, and they're all helping to make ha it happen. And it's not just Restore. We're also seeing, I'm also seeing in the group lists and all the group chats, I'm seeing other people from other churches in Loughton as well, people from Loughton Methodist Church, Loughton Baptist Church, St Mary's, Epping Forest Community Church. Um, and so it's a really exciting um, move um, and we're seeing so many um, exciting stories as well. So. We've, we started off by doing some flyering in the streets and that's still continuing because people who need help are the sorts of people that might not necessarily be on Facebook. Um, and so we've, had, we've got central contact points throughout each ward um, and the, the people who've been receiving these phone calls have been telling me they've had so many phone calls from people who are just actually not asking for help or offering help. They're just people who are saying, I've received your flyer and I'm really reassured and I'm so glad to know that I'm not alone in this. Um, and that there's someone out there who cares and there's someone on my street I can call on for help. We've had people join the group from, from very far away places like Cheltenham and Kent and Brighton and I even had someone join from Japan. Um, and the reason why they're joining is because they've got elderly parents who live in Loughton. And so when the government advice came about uh, people over 70 having to stay at home, their first reaction was, oh my goodness, my parents are all alone in Loughton. And they've contacted me to say, can I join the group so that I can connect with people who live near my elderly parents at this very vulnerable time for them. We've had this uh, uh, a red black cab driver who has volunteered and offered um, his uh, black cab time to, for free to drive around any person who is vulnerable or self-isolating to their appointments um, in the, the GP or the hospital. Um, and on earlier this week, we had uh, uh, Subway on Debden Broadway uh, had to close, um, and they, but they had a lot of fresh vegetables and bread and the essentials like Subway sauce um, to give out and because it, otherwise they were just going to throw it all away. They didn't know who to give it to. So they asked the card shop next door and the card shop asked Judy and Judy asked Matt and Matt fed it through the group and through the group we were able to distribute that food to people who were struggling to get hold of fresh groceries. Not because they couldn't afford it but just because they couldn't find it in the supermarket. Um, and so we were able to bless over 20 families with that food. 
And so um, there have been so many exciting stories sort of bubbling up and, and coming up in different places. And um, last week I spoke to um, the head of communities at Essex County Council. Um, I wanted to ask her advice around safeguarding. And to be honest, I was a bit uh, scared, a bit nervous to speak to her because I didn't want her to feel like we were kind of treading on her toes because I know that Essex County Council also has their own volunteer scheme. But actually I was really pleasantly surprised because she was so excited about the group and she said that our group had the agility and the responsiveness um, at a street level that the council could never dream to ever mobilize and so she was actually really happy about the group and actually said to me that if we need anything from the county council to let us to let them know and that they would be so happy to support us and to help us um, and so there have been so many acts of kindness and generosity. And I really believe that every time we see someone who acts out of love, that they are act walking in the opposite spirit of fear. And there's something really powerful about strengthening the connection between people in communities and to mobilize a whole community to respond with kindness and generosity at a time of crisis. And I really believe that this will be the sorts of things that will transform our community, that will last even beyond the pandemic. And so I just want us today to have a think about how can we connect with our neighbors during this time. If you're in Loughton, I welcome you to join our group on Facebook. If you're not in Loughton, maybe you can set up your own group or, or join in with an existing one. And you know what? You don't even have to join a group at all. You can just maybe think, uh, maybe think about a couple of neighbours that live on your street that you can just look out for during this time um, uh, of uh, national lockdown. I just want to finish off with this verse. Um, it's John 1:14, and it comes. It's a message version of it, which is the word became flesh and blood, and moved into the neighbourhood. And I really love the way the message phrases this verse because to me it says that Jesus became human so that he could perfectly embed himself into our communities, so that he could perfectly embed himself into our neighbourhood, and. I have this picture of that if Jesus rocked up on my street in his removal van and uh, started emptying out his furniture and moved into the house next door, the house opposite, how exciting things would be on my street because we would get to hear some of his teaching, we'd get to see some of his uh, cool healings, we'd get to see a few badass miracles, um, you know, so how exciting would that be? And then I remind myself, actually, he has moved into my neighbourhood, um, he has moved into all our neighbourhoods through us because all of us carry the power and the presence and the authority of Jesus. And so Jesus has come into the neighborhood through us. So we can't meet at the moment. Um, we can't meet physically as a church. Um, our mobility will be increasingly restricted and we can no longer be a gathered church. Um, we are now scattered across our communities. And so let's think about today how we can, even in our current lockdown situation, how we can be pe a people who walk in the authority of Jesus, to, to, uh, an authority of Jesus over every work of the enemy, over every illness, um, and how we can reach out to the people in our neighborhoods. Um, just want to encourage you now, wherever you are in your home watching this, if you could um, maybe just stand up um, just to have a time of response. Um, and if you can't stand up, that's okay as well. If you have back issues or, um, yeah, you, whatever reason you can't stand up, that's okay as well. Um, I just wanted us to respond collectively as a church because we are scattered. These acts of unity are really powerful. And I wanted us as a church to be in the same place because I, I believe that some of us in, our, in the church are already walking in power. And those people are such inspiration to me. People who already know that they um, have the authority of Jesus and they, they live in that authority and they live as sent people. And, uh, but there are others who might not know it or might have forgotten it, just like I have done so many times in my life. And so I wanted to bring us all together on the same page as one church um, uh, and in all, all our congregations and across the world and just make a few um, statements to remind ourselves that we are sent by Jesus in his authority to do the work that he has called us to do. So I'm just going to say four sentences, and if you could just repeat these four sentences after me. 
I submit myself to the authority of Jesus. I submit myself to the authority of Jesus. I recognised that he has delegated this authority to me. I recognise that he has delegated this authority to me. And I will act with his authority to do the work of his kingdom. And I will act with his authority to do the work of his kingdom. And reach out to others even in this lockdown. And reach out to others even in this lockdown. Heavenly Father, just thank you so much for the authority that you have placed in us, Lord. We want to be a people who live intentionally on mission. We want to be a people who walk in faith and not in fear. And we want to be a people sent out in power and authority. In the name of Jesus. Amen.